Okay, today I'm going to be doing another book tag. So there are 10 prompts on this book tag, and every single one of them is about the last book that you ever X. So this is a really good tag just to keep you up to date with the sorts of things I've been reading lately, or the books I've lost lately, and just in general, the latest stuff that's been going on in my bookish life. So the first question is, what is the last book that you didn't finish? Now it's rare for me that I don't finish a book, because usually even if I dislike a book, I like to get it done. But actually quite recently, I didn't finish a book, and this was one of the books that I had to read for my book club. And that book is The Line of Beauty by Alan Hollinghurst. This is the story of a young man who's living with a conservative family in the United Kingdom, and he's gay, and it's basically a social novel about being gay in the 80s. I don't know why, but this book just didn't click with me very much. It was one of those novels that's just really slow, and it's character focused, but I didn't really find any of the characters that interesting. And I also didn't get very far into the book. I think I got about a third into the book before I gave up. Now, I don't think it was a terrible book, although apparently other people in the group didn't enjoy it either. So I don't know what it was. Maybe it just didn't click with any of us because it did win the Booker Prize. So there must be something to recommend it, but it wasn't a book that I enjoyed very much. It might have also had something to do with the fact that for the previous two weeks we had already picked quite a few LGBT themed novels and so maybe by the time we got to this one I was just kind of done with that theme. I don't know, but it was the last book that I didn't finish. If you have read The Line of Beauty though, do let me know in the comments what you think of it because I'd be interested to get some thoughts from people that have read it who enjoy it. Next question is, what was the last book that you ever read? Ever read? I'm dead. <laughs> the second question is, what was the last book that you reread? The last book that I reread was Wuthering Heights, and that was because I'm doing my big series on Wuthering Heights at the minute. So I had to reread the book in order to kind of get my thoughts on the book and think about what I wanted to talk about. I think I do tend to reread that book once every year because it is just my favourite novel. So I'll probably reread it again as well in the future. And I'll also be planning to reread another book at some point in the near future because the Wuthering Heights series, I think there are about three episodes left. And so after that, I'll be coming up with a new series and a new idea. So there'll probably be something that I'll be rereading again very soon as well. Next question is, what was the last book that you ever bought? So I've kind of got two answers to this, a bit of a cheat, because there's the last book that I bought, but there's also a book that I was given after I bought that book. So I'm going to talk about both of them. The first one is finally completing my Marquis de Sade collection, which is almost there now. So this actually has three of Sade's main works in it. One I already have, which is Justine, but the other two works, which is the main reason why I bought the book, are Philosophy in the Bedroom and Eugene de Franval. I'm probably not saying that. And it also has some letters that Sade wrote in his life, as well as some of his shorter works as well. So it's going to be a while before I get into that, because, uh, you know, I spoke about Juliet quite recently. And that was quite an intense thing to get through. But I really do want to read all of Saad's stuff because I'm kind of on a kick with that at the minute. So I'll definitely get through that book some, sometime soon and probably talk about it on the channel. And the second book, the one that my friend gifted me, is The House of Leaves by Mark Danieluski. I don't know much about this book, but it's a book that's been on, actually been on my radar for a very long time. I know that it's it comes up often in like best horror books ever written, so I'm hoping that it will be very scary. And I know from my friend talking about it, that it's a very strange book. It's got chapters that look like this, for example, uh, and that's not even the weirdest ones. So it's a very bizarre book, a very creepy book I've heard. So I'm looking forward to, to reading this. And it's definitely something I think that I'll talk about on the channel when I finally get to it. But it's probably gonna be a bit of time before I get to this because it is quite a big book and I imagine quite hard going because of how weird it is, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Next question is, what is the last book that you said you read that you actually didn't read? I've actually never said that I have read a book that I haven't read because that just seems bizarre to me and I would be not confident enough in my lying skills uh, to get away with it. So I've actually never done that. I guess maybe the closest thing that I ever got to lying about a book that I hadn't read was I did talk about a book on the channel that I hadn't fully finished uh, when I made the video. So that was in my don't read that, read this video. I talked about Frankenstein and the Island of Dr. Moreau. I was part way through reading the Island of Dr. Moreau when I discussed it on the channel, but I didn't really say that I'd read it. It was more of a recommendation thing. So I guess that's the closest that I've ever got to saying that I had sort of read something that I hadn't read. Although maybe that was more just an implication. But yeah, there's no real reason to lie about that kind of thing. If you feel bad for not reading a book, then just go, uh, go read it. Um, or just admit that you haven't read it and you don't care to read it. You know, that's also fine. Next question is, what was the last book that you wrote in the margins of? Now, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure that the book that I last wrote in the margins of 
was this uh, book called Aesthetics. And basically this is a philosophy book um, and it's a comprehensive anthology of classic and modern texts in aesthetics. So I actually have never done aesthetics the whole time that I've been a student, but lately, I think because of, partly because of this channel, I've started to get into aesthetics and so I'm kind of starting with this book as an introduction and so I'm slowly working my way through it. I think I've read all of the classical pieces in it now and we're moving into kind of early modern pieces on aesthetics. It's going to take me a while to get through that, but I am enjoying it and because it's philosophy, uh, you have to write in the margins all the time. Although I'm not averse to doing that in uh, actual books as well, especially for books that I'm going to review. I think sometimes it's just helpful to have little notes here and there to remind myself of little bits that I might want to talk about later. The next question is, what was the last book that you had signed? Now again, I don't think I actually have personally got ever had a book signed. I mean, aside from like a goodbye book in school, <laughs> so that would be a long time ago and I'm not even sure I have that book anymore either. But I will, I will cheat and just show you the last book that my partner got signed. And that is again a philosophy book, this time The History of Philosophy by A.C. Grayling. This is a really good introduction to philosophy, especially if you don't know much about philosophy. It's really accessible and it's really easy to just get into. And it pretty much covers everything. It's not just focused on Western philosophy, but there are also sections on African philosophy, on Eastern philosophy, and it pretty much covers the whole of time as well. It's a really comprehensive uh, overview of, well, like the title suggests, the history of philosophy. I've just finished the first chapter on it, so that's focusing on the pre-Socratic philosophers. So these are the philosophers that come before Socrates. And yeah, it's really good. It's accessible, it's easy to read. It's not the most detailed book, so it's more focusing on overviews of ideas and it's not really getting into critical assessment of them. But I think that's quite a good thing. I mean, if you're interested in just learning about a field and its history, then it actually works quite well for that because you're not getting bogged down in the details, you're just getting a really nice big picture. So it's really interesting and I definitely would recommend if you don't know much about philosophy or even if you do know much about some bits of philosophy and you just want a big overview of all of the various things that have been talked about for the past however many thousand years. Next question is, what was the last book that you lost? I believe the last book that I lost was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and I don't think we ever found it. <laughs> Um, we read it for a book club and this was a couple of years ago now actually, so it's been a while since I've lost a book. And it just vanished and it was never seen again. And I have no idea why because I don't think I took it out of the house. My partner certainly didn't. So I'm not really sure where it went. Maybe someone picked it up by accident or something and there, there we go, it's gone. So that was the last book that I ever lost. The last book you had to replace, um, that was actually this, which I still have I suppose, but uh, uh, a Wizard of Earthsea, or the first four books of Ursula Le Guin's Earthsea cycle. Um, I was reading this for a book club and I was reading it in the bath and I dropped it straight into the bath. <laughs> so that's why it's uh, kind of, I don't know if you can see that very well, but quite frayed. Um, I didn't actually replace it, but a friend of mine lent me their copy of the book while this uh, dried out. Um, but yeah, that was the last book that probably is going to need replacing at some point because it's uh, quite damaged now. Next question is, the last book that you ever had an argument over? Now, probably because I do philosophy, that's going to be a philosophy book, but I can't actually think of a specific philosophy book recently anyway that I have had an argument over. And I have had like debates with people or discussions with people about books quite a lot, but I would say like in terms of an actual argument, that doesn't really happen all that much. I think the last time I had a proper argument about a book or at least something that was a bit heated was when I read Don Quixote for a book club and three of us in the book club gave up on the book because we just did not get into it at all. And to this day, I still haven't read, I think I read about 200 pages of it and then just gave up. Because the problem with Don Quixote is it's just very repetitive and very long. It's very episodic. You just have Don Quixote going into a scenario, doing something stupid. It's funny for the first three or four times and then it just starts to get really old. So. Maybe that's quite controversial. I mean, it's meant to be, you know, a classic uh, of literature, but it just wasn't something that I got on with at all. Um, it, you know, it was funny, it was entertaining, but I don't really understand why it's seen as something more than that. But if you have read it, let me know, because I never actually did get around to reading the second volume of the book. So it's possible that it's the second volume where things get, you know, they get a lot better. And the first volume is just more of this kind of slapstick comedy thing. So I'd be interested to know your thoughts on, on Don Quixote. But that was less book we had an argument about just because 
you know, some of us were quite vehement in our dislike of the book. And the final question is, what was the last book that you couldn't get hold of? So the last book that I couldn't get hold of was actually uh, Mood Indigo or Froth on the Daydream by, uh, what's he called? Ben... Boris Vian. This is a book that I read for a friend. So we, rather than do like a proper book club, what we decided to do was we'd both pick a book that we really enjoy and then we'd each read the other person's choice and then we'd talk about the two different books, which is quite a nice way. If, you, if there's just two of you and you want to read together, that's quite an interesting way to do it, is to kind of read a different book. There's a bit more to talk about and it's also kind of nice that you both get to choose something and read something new. Now this is a French book and the translation has a different title from Froth on a Daydream, which I think is the direct translation from the French title to the English title. But for some reason the English translation is called Mood Indigo rather than Froth on a Daydream. And so when we tried to find it, we actually couldn't find it. And it took a while to realize that, aha, it's just got a different name completely and it's not the direct translation. So we did find it in the end, uh, but unfortunately it, it took a bit of doing. I think often the only time I've really struggled to find a book is when it is a translation. Because I think sometimes they just, you know, they might get translated in like the 60s or the 70s. But if there's just not a translation done after that, it can be quite difficult sometimes to, to get hold of them. So that's usually when I have issues with getting hold of books is when I'm trying to get a translation of something. That certainly happened with uh, the Marquis de Sade. Like that copy of Juliet is, I mean, green because it's so old. Um, so yeah, I always struggle when it comes to getting translations of books in. All right, that's it for this tag. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the books that I've talked about, if you've read any of them, if you think any of them look interesting, especially the books that I was a bit negative on. I'd be definitely interested to see if any of you've read Don Quixote and what you think of that book. Do you think it's a bit, just a bit too long and a bit too slapstick? Or do you actually think it is a really good book and maybe I should give it another try sometime? Also, if you're a booktuber and you're watching this, feel free to go ahead and do the tag. And if you're not a booktuber and you want to answer the questions, feel free to answer them down in the comments. But that is it for this video though, so take care everyone. Ta-ra!